Music is all around us, beginning with toddlers' ditties like Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star or Nila, Nila, Udiva or Chanda, Mama, Dur Ke, beginning with such small, small songs, mothers' lullabies, songs that mothers sing to put their children to sleep, school prayers, national songs, national anthems, songs to, to celebrate births, harvest, marriage, songs sung in praise of deities in temples, religious songs, bhajans and we have the ubiquitous pop music and we also have classical music. Music is indeed all around us and in today's world more so than ever before what with all these modern gadgets. Music is a constant companion almost. And it's astonishing to think about this variety of music that we have and more so when we consider that all this variety has sprung from just seven notes and there are five variants as we shall see shortly. Now, given that what we call Carnatic music is a variety of music that we get to hear today, it, is, it can be illuminating to try to understand what Carnatic music is in the context of these other forms of music, these other genres of music, to understand it by way of contrast. Eminent musicologist Dr. Ashok Ranade has suggested that Indian music, what is called Indian music by which is meant music that is Indian in origin. Indian music can be understood as falling under any of five categories. These, this is what he calls the musical pented. So, Indian music the wide variety of music that we can hear that is Indian belongs to one of these five categories. So, according to Dr. Ranade, this the variety of music that we can hear that is Indian falls under any of these five categories what he calls the musical pented. So, this is Indian music. which according to Dr. Ashok Ranade can be understood as a painted. The five categories of Indian music according to him are tribal or primitive music. Now, this is music that you and I cannot easily get to hear because this is music that is practiced uh, in the context of tribal rituals and ceremonies and this music is particularly isolated, quite uh, immune to influence from outside and in, in turn it does not influence other forms of music. The, the second category is folk music what is called Lok, Lok Geet. Now, this is literally music of the folk, music that, uh, that is sung in rural settings on occasions of birth, marriage, death, harvest and other village gatherings. Now, some of the core features of this music of folk music is that it is song dominated and these songs are not usually traced to any one person as their author. The songs, the music uh, are creations and properties of the entire village community and the music itself serves the function of strengthening the uh, communal bond. So, the third category is religious music. This is music sung in temples and in other religious gatherings. 
Um, here the songs are appropriate to the temple, the deity or the occasion or even the sampradaya, the, the particular tradition of uh, religious ritual or religious gathering that is uh, happening. And then the purpose of this musical performance is to heighten the religious fervor among the gathering. The fourth category is what is most widely heard and widely liked. This is popular music and uh, in the case of India, Indian popular music it is certainly mostly film music. And finally, the last category of Indian music is what he calls art music, which is what is classical music, Hindustani, Carnatic and such other mu musical genres belong under the category of art music. Now, the main feature of art music is that the intent of the performer is artistic. That is the art musician or the classical musician whether it is Carnatic or Hindustani performs in order to be recognized as an artist in order to showcase his or her artistic uh, standing, artistic ability. To give an example, most compositions in Carnatic music are religious in content. They are in praise of some one or the other Hindu deity. But Carnatic music is not religious music in the sense that Dr. Ranade speaks about. Though the content is religious, the intent of the Carnatic musician is artistic. So, when the Carnatic musician performs a composition in praise of a Hindu deity, he or she is not trying to or certainly ought not to try to just uh, evoke religious fervor in the listener. That might happen as a side effect, but the primary intent of the performer is artistic. It is to present the composition in a technically and aesthetically satisfying way. So, that is how art music or classical music uh, the primary feature of this genre is that the intent of the performer is artistic. Now, given that there are these five categories of music, what are the criteria that, uh, that distinguish one from the other? What are the criteria that can separate these five categories? If you look at the slide, the first criterion would of course be the content of the music itself, content in terms of text, melody and rhythm. To uh, make a to give an example, folk music or religious music will have a certain kind of uh, rhythm, a certain kind of uh, percussive accompaniment which, um, which you would not find in classical music. Folk music and uh, religious music, the percussive accompaniment is likely to be very, uh, is full of verve which, which kind of heightens the, the celebratory mood of the occasion. The second criterion would be ensemble. What is the ensemble of performers? Now, to take, uh, if, if, you go, if you consider pop music, a film song for instance, the ensemble consists of a, a one or two singers, playback singers and a, a whole lot of people that comprise the orchestra. Whereas, uh, if you take Carnatic music, it is a very simple ensemble. The kind of accompaniment, the kind of uh, ensemble that constitutes the folk music will also be different. The third criterion which is uh, quite important is a question, 
is the music part of a larger event fulfilling some function or is the music the sole focus now clearly religious music if you have bhajan singing in a temple or bhajan singing in a radha kalyanam in uh, in tanjavur or in uh, any southern town the the music itself is part of the larger function the largest larger purpose of the religious gathering which is to evoke the devotional fervor music itself is not the sole focus music has a function whereas in a uh, hindustani or a carnatic concert the music itself is the sole focus it is not part of some larger function or larger purpose um there is an interesting distinction made by Heinrich Bessler a distinction between everyday music and presentational music now folk music or mother's lullabies or even to some extent religious music these are, these would all belong under everyday music music that is part of a larger function presentational music where music is something that stands in its own right and the focus is entirely on the music itself that is something that would only subsume art music and possibly pop popular music now another criterion is the participation of audience how does the audience participate is the audience passive is the audience simply sitting and listening to the music or is it actively participating to the performers and amongst the performers also how what is the kind of interaction amongst the uh, performers and how do the performers interact with the audience in a pop music concert for instance you will constantly find the performers trying to engage with the audience trying to get them to stand up and start dancing or clapping or something now this is something that will never happen in a classical music concert and we also have assessment criteria given that there has been a performance of carnatic music or of shankar mahadevan how is a concert assessed do we have objective criteria for assessing such a concert and finally uh, but quite importantly there are what is called performance peripherals the the ambience of the performance the kind of costumes that the performers and the audience wear the kind of lighting that we have obviously the ambience in a pop music concert is very different from the ambience in a classical music concert and again it's very different from the ambience in a religious musical gathering this then was the musical pentad that dr ashok ranade has suggested where we have five categories of music that uh, can account for all the variety of indian music now needless to say these categories are not watertight there is considerable straddling of these categories so that you may have musical forms which may not quite belong to one or the other category but may belong to two at the same time um so also the distinction between everyday music and presentational music that uh, i spoke about some time ago there are musical forms or musical performances which may not clearly belong to one or the other genre one or the other kind of music now uh just to get a feel of what these kinds of music what are the kinds of music that i'm talking about let us listen to some musical clips the first clip is a uh, a song from a tamil movie called karuttamma let us listen to this song now this is a song as i said from uh, the movie called karuttamma 
uh, whose uh, music director is uh, A.R. Rahman. And uh, the, the song clearly has a folksy feel to it, even without the visuals of the rural setting. Just the song itself gives the feeling of a rural setting. Um, and there it's achieved, this is achieved by two main things. One is the lyrics itself, the lyrics themselves. And secondly, and very importantly, the rhythm, the kind of rhythm that the song has, it, it lends it a very folksy feel. Now, alongside this clearly folksy sounds of the percussion, in the interludes of the song, you could hear an orchestra of violins. Now, this is what is most interesting about popular music. Now, clearly, this belongs to the genre of popular music. That there is no restriction, there is no limit, really, to what a musician may use in a, to create a, a song in the genre of popular music. What matters is really that it should make the required impact in the context of the film or that it should be very simply popular. The, the main focus of the, uh, a popular musician is that a lot of people should like it. It should cater to the tastes of a lot of people. This is not to say that pop music does not concern itself with good music. We have some very fine musicians in the world of pop music and any musician at all must strive after good music. But what are the criteria for good music in the world of popular music? This is certainly more fuzzy than it is in the case of classical music. In fact, we like to believe that there are objective criteria for good music in classical music. A classical musician, a Carnatic musician is expected to adhere to traditional values of content and presentation that ensure dignity of the music above all and to not tinker with form or content. But there are experiments going on in this world too, even if the majority of the community of Carnatic music approaches such experiments warily. Eventually, of course, change does happen for the good and the bad, which after all is a mark of a live tradition of music. But the classical musician is expected to stick to core values and should hope that it appeals to many people. It would be an exercise in itself to consider the relation between the classical musician and popularity. But this is true that if a musician is seen as suiting the music mainly to cater to a larger cross section of people, she or he is likely branded as populist. Now, this is the second clip that I'll play now. This is, this belongs to the category of, why don't you tell me what category it belongs to. Tam namami, tam namami, yadi sresh tam namami, bodhendram, jagadam guru namami. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
बोधेन्द्र गुरु भजे गोगींद्र वर्ण बोधेन्द्र गुरु भजे गोगींद्र most of you would have guessed right this is religious music the performer is udayalur kalyanaraman a leading performer of what we call nama sankirtanam now there is a, a, a tradition of what is called bhajana sampradaya um, it is at least uh, 200 years old coming from tanjavur Tanjavur as some of you would know had a period of rule by the Maratha kings and this bhajana tradition actually has its roots in the uh, bhajana tradition of the Maratha uh, 
religious gatherings. As you could see, the, the kind of accompaniment that they have, the ensemble, how they, uh, the, the percussion highlights, heightens the, the effect of the music, all that is very unique to religious music. Now, let us hear this piece now. We just heard Sanjay Subramanian, a leading Carnatic performer, and he was performing the Ailapana or an improvisation of Raga Pantuvarali. Now, here, as you would have made out, the music is the sole focus. Then, what will it sound when the percussion also kicks in? Let us li listen to a short clip from another piece. So that is how it sounds when the percussion also joins. This is a particularly fast piece and it does not always sound like this. The percussive effect is not always like this. And as we will learn a little later in the course, the percussive instruments that were used were the mridangam, the ghatam and the morsing. Now clearly, the kind of interaction among the performers is of a very different kind from the kind of uh, interaction that you have in uh, a bhajan or uh, in film music. Because here there is a lot of spontaneity that is uh, involved and a lot of anticipation that is expected on the part of the accompanists. And also the level of technical expertise and aesthetic uh, attainment is quite different in the case of classical music. 